What is going on YouTube? It is Quick Snoopy, and today I am making a guide and tutorial on how to live stream to Twitch, and it's really easy, and it's using OBS Studio, also known as Open Broadcast Software. Before I start this video, I do want to mention there is an OBS Studio, which is the latest up-to-date version. It has some unique features that OBS Classic does not. OBS Classic is no longer supported, so I do want to say that. Just in case if people are using the older one or they're interested in using the older one, all you have to do is go to obsproject.com and hit download on OBS Studio. And it has a list of unique features below. Once you've downloaded it, go ahead and open it up. And I have mine open right here. On the top left, you can hit File, Settings. Or on the bottom right, you will also be able to see Settings. When you open that up, you're going to see something similar to this. The language I put for English and the theme may be on the default. I personally use the dark theme just because it is more easy on the eyes, but it is personal preference. When you look down here, there is something I do want to mention, and that is automatically record when streaming. Some people like to record their live streams. That way, once they're done, they can upload it to YouTube, upload it to Facebook, edit it, uh, have it for personal use, whatever the case may be you can record while you're live streaming and you can also continue to record when the live stream stops if that is something you're interested in. I do believe Twitch has an option where you can download your videos or download your live streams from Twitch and then upload to YouTube through there, but it is personal preference and some people do like to edit it. The rest of the settings I did leave alone. I enabled source alignment snapping. These are all personal features that you may or may not like. You have to figure them out for yourself. Under stream type, I have stream services. And for this video, it is going to be Twitch. You can also choose YouTube gaming, Facebook. So once you're on Twitch, I do want to look at the servers. There are a list of servers here, and you're going to want to pick a server that is close to you. If you live in the United States on the West, you might want to choose San Francisco or Los Angeles, Phoenix, San Jose, California, Seattle, Washington, these are all different options you have. And if you're in Europe, there is options for Europe, Asia, Australia. And you just need to find a server that's close to you. Now, stream key. This is very important. You're going to want to use this for the server or the website you are using. For Twitch, I have Twitch pulled up right here. And once you are logged in, you're going to want to click on the top right arrow. Click on Dashboard. And once you are here at the Dashboard, you're going to see a lot of different things and this is where you can title your broadcast. You can title it whatever you want. Uh, you can also pick the language if you want to restrict the chat language. But these are all Twitch settings. None of them are really related to open broadcast software until you click on settings here. Once you click on settings, you're going to see some stream preferences, drops, and moderation. You can make mods for your chat. For this one, you're going to want to click on stream key. Now. Some broadcasting applications require you to use your stream key in order to connect and broadcast your Twitch channel. You're going to want to hit show key. Now it's going to come up with something similar to this and it will say never share your stream key with anyone, Twitch, staff admins, and you're going to want to click I understand. I'm not going to because it will show my stream key, but I did create a separate account for it. So when you click, I understand there should be a stream key that pops up. You're going to want to copy that stream key into OBS studio where it says stream key. So it's really easy to just copy and paste and hit apply at the bottom right. Once you have done that, you are officially able to live stream to Twitch, but you're going to want to optimize the settings for your computer. So click on output on the left side on OBS. Now I have mine set to advanced. You can choose simple if you like, but I'm going to show advanced. Not because this is an advanced tutorial, but because there are more features in advanced and you're gonna want your stream to look nice and you're not gonna want it to lag as much. So when you were seeing encoder, you can choose NVEC H264 or X264. Some people prefer to use their CPU to live stream but there's also different CPUs have different features and you can also use your graphics card to live stream as well uh, if your graphics card is able to do that. For audio tracks, I did not want to skip this, but I have mine set to one. And if you're more advanced, 
you were going to want to set it to different ones. There are a few cases. I'm not going to name them. Uh, but you can start with one and you can add audio tracks if you feel that you need to do that. Under rate control, I have mine set to CBR. CBR stands for a constant bit rate. You can drop down and you can choose ABR or VBR, which is going to be your variable bit rate. For this one, you do constant. Now the bit rate is pretty much you're uploading the video to Twitch. So the higher the bit rate, the higher the quality. I do want to mention that Twitch has a limit on 3,500 of the bit rate. And I'm actually going to pull their website over here. And their website has recommended bit rates for encoding settings. Now this is a little bit different because this is for OBS Classic. So not all of these are going to apply, but the bit rate is the same. So it has recommended bit rates for different qualities that you're going to use the live stream. I live stream at 720p, sometimes I'll live stream at 1080p, so I will adjust my bit rate accordingly. And this is for you to look at and for you to decide, do I want to live stream at 720 or 1080? I will link this article below. It does have some really awesome information that can help if you're wanting to get into live streaming. Keyframe interval, zero is auto. I have mine set to two. This is really complicated, but basically it's how often your stream refreshes, if that makes any sense. Uh, CPU usage, the higher equals less CPU. So I have mine set to very fast, but the higher it goes, the less CPU or processor it uses. So if you're finding some lag, you might want to adjust this. But to start with, I would say try very fast. Profile, I have mine set to main. Tune, I do not have any tune. Uh, X264 options. I did put open, um, I did put this right here. I did some research and I was having some issues with lag at the time, but now I can get rid of it just fine. It is personal preference. Under audio, sample rate, I have 48 kilohertz. Channel, stereo, and you can also adjust your desktop audio devices and your mic and auxiliary auto devices. Now when you're here, you're gonna see I have a few different already set, I have a few different devices already set up and you can choose enable push to talk and you can also add a delay. Some people like to have push to talk or open mic when they live stream. Under video, you're gonna see base canvas resolution. If your monitor is 1080p, you're gonna to wanna to have a 1920 by 1080. I have three monitors hooked up right now so they're all recognized here and they're all 1920 by 1080. If you have a 4K monitor or a monitor that is 720p or an older monitor, you're gonna to want to find whatever monitor this is and the resolution. The outscale output scaled resolution is what resolution do you wanna live stream at? So if you wanna live stream at 1080p, you can live stream at 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720. For common FPS values, it's how, how, what do you, what FPS do you want to stream at? And that is your frames per second. So again, if you're having lag, you might want to lower this to 30 or 60. It depends on what kind of game you're playing and how action packed is it. Under hotkeys, I do not have too many hotkeys set up and you can adjust them accordingly. These are going to be a little bit different for everyone. And under advanced, I did want to mention I have process priority is normal, video uh, renderer is direct 3D 11, I don't have any video adapters, color format is NV12, uh, and you can look at the rest of the settings here as well. Once you have officially set up your OBS Studio settings, that is unique to your computer because you may have to change things. I change settings a lot when I live stream just because some days I want to live stream at higher quality, you know, lower quality. You do have to be aware that the viewer is essentially downloading your live stream and their internet has to be good enough to encode the live stream or they are not able to watch it. Um, so if you have a really high um, output bitrate, then sometimes viewers won't have a good enough internet to watch it. This is a common issue for people, but you have to find out what is best for you. Most people are able to download and watch a bit rate at 2,500. 
Um, other than that, let's go ahead and click OK. And the scenes and sources should be empty. You want to go to scenes and right click and hit add. Now you can enter the name of your scene. I named mine desktop just because I was working on this video earlier. You can right click on sources and hit add. Now when you see add, you're going to see a lot of other choices here like audio input, audio output, browser source, color source, display, game capture. You need to find one that is best for you. Are you going to be playing a game? Then you should use game capture. Are you using an Elgato or external capture card? You might want to hit video capture device. If you are just wanting to record your browser or live stream something through your browser, like maybe a browser game or something, you might want to go to display capture and display capture would allow you to capture your monitor. For this one, I'm actually going to click on game capture and I wanted to show you guys Minecraft. So we'll hit create new and then I'll type Minecraft. Okay, so I get a few different options here. I can hit capture any full screen application. I can capture a specific window or I can capture out, capture a foreground window with hotkey. If you want to capture a specific window, you need to have the game running. So for this one, I would hit window and right now there is no Minecraft. And this is because I'm not running Minecraft at this time. So OBS studio does not recognize Minecraft as an ongoing process. Otherwise, you can hit capture in your full screen application. For this one, I'm actually going to show the specific window. So I'm going to open up Minecraft. So as you can see, I currently have Minecraft open. Now you're going to want to hit alt tab and alt tab out so you can add it in open broadcast software. When I go back to OBS Studio, I have Minecraft here listed in my sources. You're going to want to right click and hit properties. Remember how I had, on, how I had it on capture specific window? You're going to want to click on window. And now you see java.exe Minecraft 1.12. Click on that. Some games may not be recognized. If you use uh, if you don't use anti cheat compatibility hook, so if you're trying to live stream H1Z1 and it's not working, try the anti cheat compatibility. I, I'm not. I'm done. So um, you can check that if you need to, or you can capture third party overlays such as Steam. So if you want to capture your Steam overlay, maybe you're talking with a friend. I'm not sure. Um, so now that I have this open, nothing is appearing here. Well, that's because I don't have Minecraft open on my monitor. Like it's alt tabbed out, remember? Under transform, I'm gonna hit fit to screen. Open up Minecraft again. Now when I look at OBS Studio, it shows that I have Minecraft here. This is like the preview window. If I wanted to, on the bottom right, I could hit start streaming or start recording, and it would allow me to live stream Minecraft. So as you can tell, this is in OBS Studio. All I had to do was click on Minecraft and actually load Minecraft on my computer. You basically have to bring it to the front, if that makes any sense. Hopefully this video did help you out. If it did, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe and share it with some friends. I would greatly appreciate it. At the end of the day, I am trying to help and a lot of people are wanting the live stream and hopefully this video does help out. I will see you guys later. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and peace. Is it easy to show with the weight of the world on my shoulders? I know I told you. It's the best slide I know. It's not a game that I am playing.